that there is a red spot red spot on jupiter which is you know to engulf planet here then you have the ringed planet saturn there are few questions about uh, gas giant jupiter and the ringed planet saturn so this is the ring is i can see some of the moons of the saturn moving across the rings of the saturn then you have the tilted planets uranus you have blue planet neptune then you have the first pictures of pluto and charon this is how pluto looked like some 25 years back but nowadays we know that there was a spacecraft known by the name new horizons which has taken the image of pluto in all its majesty flying just 12000 kilometers above the surface of pluto and this is a very close up image of the surface of pluto pluto has thrown up many interesting challenges to planetary geologists it seems to be very active situated so far away from the sun it is geologically active and that is quite very surprising now we are going to see few interesting slides how can we compare the size of planet earth with that of moon and pluto as you can see planet earth is really very very big and it is bigger than of course our moon pluto is smaller than our moon that is why they have demoted pluto from planets and they have placed it in minor planets list of all the rocky planets earth is slightly larger than venus twice as large than mars when we compare the size of earth with that of jupiter now we are in for a surprise jupiter is the biggest planet in our solar system it's really very big and when we say compare the size of all the planets with that of sun sun is our star we know that it is a ball of fire in the center of our solar system a small spot on the sun is enough to engulf planet earth now you can see the size comparison of sun with that of planets can you see planet earth here it is so very small as you may be aware sun is not the biggest star in the night sky it is an average size star when we compare the size of sun with big stars you can see sun is a very very small thing yet it is invisible at this scale and when you compare the size of other stars with that of sun sun is not at all visible it is just one pixel here in this picture so we have quite very interesting things in the night sky you can see waxing and waning of our moon our solar system is having so much of moons the biggest moon being ganymede of jupiter followed by titan of saturn callisto io europa and moon we are having so much of moons then meteor is a phenomenon what we have in our solar system it is tiny pieces of rocks that enter the earth atmosphere and they get completely burnt up and people some people believe that when you see shooting star it is a good luck phenomenon when these meteors come and crash down on the surface of planet it is meteor right it is a lump of rock or a metal from space that crashes on the surface of planet here if these rocks travel in interplanetary space they are known as meteorites and you may know about asteroids between the orbit of mars and jupiter you have thousands and thousands of rocky bodies and there are million practically millions of these asteroids and the biggest asteroid being ceres it is 1000 km in diameter they have taken samples from asteroid like asteroid itokawa a spacecraft named hayabusa launched by japan they have taken samples from asteroids there are thousands of asteroids like this and even asteroids have moon system asteroid moon system a bigger asteroid being uh, revolved around by smaller moon system then you have comet the icy bodies which is coming from the far reaches of the solar system the short period comets come from kuiper belt and the long period from comets come from oort cloud and this is halley's comet taken on march 14 1986 and the photograph was taken by gato space probe launched by italy through european space agency and the next appearance of halley's comet will be in the year 2062 i hope most of you will be alive during that time some 42 years from now so if you are lucky we will be able to see halley's comet coming into planet earth's uh, orbit once again you are seeing comets swarthman watchman there are thousands and thousands of comets recently they landed on a comet and it is named churimo garasimenko and it is a very very close up image of the comet churimo garasimenko 
and uh, they have taken an image of a Kuiper belt object quite recently by New Horizons Space Probe. So much of things are there to explore, so much of things to do, but we have limited resources and we are doing our best to do all these things. And these are the constituents of our solar system. Till now we were traveling really very slow, now we are going to travel very fast. And with this we have come to the end of solar system. A star is a self-luminous ball of gas. We all know that they emit light on their own. We have double star system like Albiro double star system. You have triple star system like what you are seeing in this picture. A neutron star and a two white dwarfs having a common center of gravity. So you are seeing a giant planet around a triple star system. Having one star itself is a very big challenge like our sun. If we are having a star system like this, then we are in for a very, very hot climate. And you have quadruple star system, four star system, and so on. There are many, many star systems like this. So you have, in general, two bigger classifications of star systems. Galactic star system or globular star system. So galactic cluster or open cluster or star systems which are having hundreds of stars having common center of gravity. They may be together for a long, long time. They may drift also. So they are not very compact in uh, practically speaking. Then you have Omega Centauri, global star system. Millions and millions of stars in a single star system. And that is really very quite amazing. And you are now seeing inside Omega Centauri, thousands and thousands of stars having common center of gravity. These kind of star system, global star systems are found near the center of galaxies. Open star system like global star system, like Pleiades star system, they are found in the peripheral edges of the galaxy. Then you know something called as nebula, a region of gas and dust in galaxy. Usually they are fuzzy in appearance. You are seeing a very, very famous uh, nebula, Oxford nebula. A galaxy is one which contains all these things, star system, solar system, then you go nebulae, you go various kind of different, different parts of a galaxy. Like it is a system of billions of stars bound together by their own gravity. We know our own galaxy is Milky Way galaxy. There was an interesting question from one of the participants. Do we have some other galaxies? We really do have billions and billions of them. But you are right, some hundred years before, in 1920, there was a debate whether there are other galaxies like our own Milky Way galaxy or we have only nebulae. Even they were considering Andromeda galaxy as a nebula, Andromeda nebula, some 120 years before, if you were in an astronomy class, they might have told you we have only one galaxy, that is Milky Way galaxy, and all other things are nebula. But we have now discovered thousands and thousands of galaxies. You are seeing a similar galaxy to Milky Way galaxy, Valpool galaxy. You are seeing Pinwheel galaxy, and these galaxies form groups. And this is known as six and combat groups. And groups of groups of galaxies are known as superclusters of galaxies. We have thousands of groups of galaxies, keep and sprinted, safer, sexted, and all these groups of galaxies form superclusters of galaxies. You are able to see Hercules supercluster. You are able to see Hubble Ultra Deep Field. You know, you are seeing now galaxy cluster able, and this is an amazing image. Whatever points you will see in this image, except that cross symbol or spike symbol, which is star inside our own Milky Way galaxy, each and every star is a galaxy. You are seeing literally thousands and thousands of galaxies. This is Hubble Ultra Deep Field. So the universe is one which contains all these super clusters of galaxies. And that's not the end of the matter. What else is there? Do we have parallel universe? Do we have multiverse? Scientists are speculating this concept. It is not a proven one. We have to mind that. It is a speculation by many scientists, like even Stephen Hawking, the great astrophysicist. So we are thinking of multiverse, we are thinking of parallel universes, we are thinking of black holes as connecting um, between one universe to another universe. All these things are quite nice to talk about, but in reality they may not be true also. 
So this is local super cluster of galaxy. Can you see a blue line the local group? I hope you are able to see in the middle of the picture, there is something called a local group. We are belonging to that kind of space. We are there. And this is local galactic group. Here you can clearly see our own galaxy, Milky Way galaxy. We are able to see a bigger galaxy in our local galactic group, Andromeda galaxy. And the distance between Milky Way galaxy and Andromeda galaxy is roughly 2.2 million light years. And we have so many, so many dwarf galaxies surrounding our own Milky Way galaxy. We have so many dwarf galaxies surrounding Andromeda galaxy. The two prominent members of our own local galaxy group is Milky Way galaxy and Andromeda galaxy. And this is our own galaxy. And you are seeing Sun, which is nearly two thirds distance from the center of the Milky Way galaxy. And this is our local neighborhood. Sun is very, very close to Proxima Centauri. We know the distance, it is 4.2 light years away. Sun is relatively living in an uh, empty space, and that is really very good for us. Otherwise, we will be having so many suns, which will be very difficult to handle. And this is our solar system, and we know that we are very, very near to our sun. This is our immediate neighborhood. There were some quite interesting questions on Earth. Some participants, they were asked some interesting questions about planet Earth. They were asking, is there any zero gravity place on Earth? Actually, there is no such thing as zero gravity. You may feel weightlessness when you are moving around planet Earth with a certain velocity. But zero gravity is a different thing. We can never say there is some place in the universe where we have zero gravity. The Earth's gravity, as we know, keeps the moon in orbit. We have to keep in mind gravity never disappears entirely. It just gets weaker at some point. Even acceleration due to gravity is very strong near uh, our equator region. Uh, sorry, as it is in polar region, it is stronger. And as we move towards equator region, it is having some approximate value of 9.8 meter per second square. Why do seasons occur? One uh, student asked. You know, it is because of the tilt of the Earth in its axis, in its orbit. So, yes, it's tilted 23.5 degree in its orbit. So, we are having season. What will happen if a rock falls on planet Earth? You will have a crater like this. It is a mile long. It is nearly 200 meters deep. So, it is because of a meteor crash on Arizona in USA. If it is a really bigger meteor, or if it is an asteroid which is bigger in size, then we will have catastrophic events on planet Earth. There will be huge tsunami, there will be massive earthquake, even it may trigger volcanic eruptions, and there will be total destruction and chaos. And what will happen if a comet crashes onto planet Earth? There also we have a quite difficult scenario. You may remember some 20 years before, Comet Shoemaker Levy, nearly 25 years before, it crashed into Jupiter. If the same comet had crashed into planet Earth, we will not be living here and speaking with each other. So, comet is a bigger thing, and if it crashes on planet Earth, then life will become difficult for many of us. Already we are suffering from coronavirus. We do not need any other tragedy to affect us. There was a question like this. How solar systems are getting formed? Solar systems, as per current understanding, they are formed from a cloud of gas and dust. These clouds of gas and dust, they rotate. And as they rotate, they get collected in a particular point in the center of that cloud, and that becomes a star. The remaining things get accredited. They get uh, collected in particular format and they become planets. This is the current understanding of science. And as per the current theory, the sun, the solar system, it had a chaotic birth scenario. The planets are in a fixed position as of now. They may not have been in those kind of positions some billions of years back. That is according to the current scientific theory. Are we alone in the universe? Are we really alone in the universe? This is a nice question because asked 
by many of the participants. Do we have aliens in our neighborhood? So are we alone in the universe? What are the three important things about the evolution of life as per science? Can you guess it? So I hope you are able to see this slide quite clearly. Are we alone in the universe? <coughs> this is a question. Can life originate on another world if the conditions are suitable? According to Gray Miller theory, we are going to see that answer. Will life always evolve towards intelligence? This is another question. As per the scientific understanding, we are having intelligence, of course, that is why we are talking with each other, we are having computers and all these things, Zoom meeting and everything. Will life have intelligence if it is evolving in some other part of the universe? And there will be another question, will they have super intelligence? Will they have more knowledge than what we are having? How common are suitable conditions for the beginning of life? Now, according to Uri Miller experiment, they were successful in creating some amino acids, but those kind of amino acids were not found in life on planet Earth, and those kind of amino acids were not also stable. So that is a bigger discussion. We may not go into that kind of discussion now, but they were successful in forming some kind of amino acid. Will life always evolve towards intelligence? Now, here comes again Darwin's theory. If intelligence favors one species over another, the answer is a probable yes only. We have to really investigate the conditions on other planets and statistics of stars in our Milky Way galaxy. Then only we can come to a conclusion. How common are suitable conditions for the beginning of life? What are the requirements for life? What are the requirements of life as we know it? Here you have to understand an important thing as we know it. Of course, if we have evolved by chance, if it is all a probable thing, life can have infinite number of forms, infinite number of probabilities. It need not have two legs, two eyes, or two feet like what we have. It can have any different forms. So the common requirements of life as we know it is liquid water, an atmosphere, moderate temperatures like what we have, and time, billions and billions of years of time to evolve from single organic form to a higher life form. So life in our solar system. We know as of now only on planet Earth we have life. Do we have life on any other part of our solar system? There are few questions in that regard. As of now, to the best of understanding, do we have life on any other part of our solar system? So I will give you a few seconds to ponder over that question. You may think of few places on planet Earth. Do we have life on any other part of our solar system? As of now, no. But the most promising candidate is Mars. And some years before, some decades before a meteorite from Mars crashed on planet Earth, they told it has some fundamental life forms, but it is not a confirmed result. So we have to neglect that result. Many moons of Jupiter, moons of Saturn, they may have life as per the current understanding. What about other planetary systems? Planetary systems are common. Kepler space probe has uh, taken the image of many planetary systems. So there may be a possibility of other planetary systems having life. So we should not be in a place where it is too hot. We should not be in a place where it is too cold. So we should be in a particular zone around a star, which is known as Goldilocks zone or a zone where life is possible as we know it. So far, we have spent many millions of dollars in searching for life extraterrestrial life. So it is known as SETI, the search for extraterrestrial life. And we have done our level best to detect life or signal from some other alien civilization. So far we have not been successful. 
and we have to reduce all kind of background noise from the universe. It's a challenging task. Then they had billion channel extraterrestrial assay. Now we have so many programs running for detecting life in outer space. And you may be aware of Drake equation. The Drake equation tells us the life is possible at least in one civilization mm -hmm. within a few dozens of light years distance. So there may be life possible according to this Drake equation within few dozen light years. But still now, we cannot receive any signal from any other civilization. Our, civil, our signal, we, what we are sending into space, <laughs> it seems that it, nobody is receiving them. So we have to really wait and watch. Kepler Space Probe has untracked for us many solar systems like what you are seeing on the screen. Kepler 62 is a planetary system. You can see in the habitable zone, there is no planet. They are very, very close to their parent star. And you can see Kepler 186 planetary system. Maybe only one planet, which is very similar to planet here, is in habitable zone. And Kepler 22, almost all the planets are in habitable zone. That is very, quite very interesting. And you have Kepler 452. And most of those planets are in habitable zone. Do they have contained life? We really do not know. We have to wait and watch. Now, imagine if there are alien life forms out there, what will be their shape? Will they have six legs? Will they have two legs? Of course, it is imagination by our own artist. Since we are having two legs and two hands, they are not able to go beyond this basic structure. But uh, you may be, some of you may be offended by seeing that next slide. If we are having a real Miss Universe contest, a real Miss Universe contest where we are having aliens also participating, the judges may be saying something like this. Oh, such a yes, girl, don't stand a chance of winning. And you can see all other life forms. That is quite very strange. You can have any kind of imagination. But you may have a beautiful life like this in some other alien world. See-through structure. Of course, this uh, living species is in planet here. It is not in any other alien world. Sometimes you may find a very dull-looking, drab-looking life species like this also. It's not quite very uh, nice to look at this creature. But anyhow, it may not be uh, completely not useful. They are having their own usefulness. So now we are coming to stars. Stars, as you know, they are self-luminous ball of gas. And you can see this is the main sequence star in the middle of the screen. And sun is an yellow star. It is not a green star and an orange star as somebody had asked questions. It is a main sequence star. Now you can see super giants and red giant star, white dwarf stars, and you are seeing the hottest, you are seeing the luminous, the brightest, and you are seeing some kind of stars like this. There are many types of stars, especially we are classifying them into seven groups. You can see their surface temperature. Our star is G2. It is having a surface temperature of 5000 to 6000 Kelvin. Some questions were asked about sun. Why the corona of the sun is much, much hotter than the surface of the sun? Scientists are still trying to unravel that mystery. So it is still remaining a mystery. If you are really interested, you are also welcome to be a part of that kind of research. Many, many faculty, many, many students had asked about black hole. Of course, it is really very wonderful to know. Black hole always speaks to our imagination. It is an awesome thing to our imagination. So let me try to be very brief here to explain about the life cycle of stars. Stars can have two life cycles. One, an ordinary life cycle, our own sun, or another thing is called an extraordinary life cycle like the formation of a black hole. Star forming nebulae, if they are forming a sun-like star, an average-sized star, then 
it will form a red giant at the end of the lifetime and then it will become a planetary nebula after the planetary nebula stage it will become a white dwarf and then after the white dwarf it will become a black dwarf that's the end of the star but if the star is a massive star nearly 8 to 10 times the mass of our sun what will happen that star will become a red super giant and after which after the nuclear reaction stops at the core it will explode in a fantastic thing called supernova and if the mass of the remaining thing is more than a particular limit it will become a black hole otherwise it will become a neutron star so that is how it will be there right so this is the life cycle of a star in a very brief terminology they begin their lives as clouds of dust and gas as per the current understanding of science gravity causes the nebula to contract they become a protostar after they become a protostar they take two different steps either they become main sequence star like our sun and the life span of the star depends on its size if it is very large if it is very massive they burn their fuel very quicker and they live only for few hundreds of thousands of years small stars will live for billions of years as per the current understanding of science the sun has lived nearly for 5 billion years and it will live more for another 5 billion years even today when the nuclear fuel of the star begins to burn out then something will happen like in the case of our sun it will become a red giant and then the star will collapse and then it will become a planetary nebula it will shed off the outer layer we become planetary nebula it will become a white dwarf then it will become a black dwarf if the star is very massive as we have seen it will become a red super giant star and again once the nuclear fuel runs out the star will collapse and it will explode in a very violent manner known as supernova we have also hypernovae very very violent supernova and if the mass is below a particular limit it will become a neutron star if it is above a particular limit they will become a black hole so that is how black holes are formed so many questions were asked how black holes are formed so again you can see an average star will become a white dwarf a massive star will end up as a black hole this is a real artistic rendition of a black hole so black hole can be of many types primordial black holes which is formed during the initial uh, big bang a uh, submassive black hole which is having less mass than even our sun cell not black holes so mass is slightly greater than our sun intermediate mass black holes mass greater than hundreds of times than our mass of sun supermassive black hole mass having billions of times billions of times mass as a that of our sun what will happen to a object which will fall into a black hole due to the immense gravity it will be crushed into many places pieces it will be crushed in horizontal di- direction it will be crushed in vertical direction it will elongate like a noodle and that is called spaghettification and then it will be gone why it is not visible because even light cannot escape from the immense gravitational field of black hole what is inside a black hole nobody knows so i am giving you some size comparison the size of an atom is 10 power minus 10 meter the size of a nucleus is 10 power minus 15 meter the size of a protein is approximately 10 power minus 16 meter the size of an electron is 10 power minus 18 meter what is the size of a black hole now when you consider the atomic density of uranium it is around 7000 kg per meter cube but when you consider the nuclear density of uranium atom it is an astounding amount 5.92 10 16 kg per meter cube you can clearly understand atom is having so much of empty space if the entire singularity it is less than 10 minus 40 meter less than 10 minus 40 meter it is so very small so very small even than the size of an electron then what will be the density of this kind of black hole intermediate massive black hole the density will be anywhere between 2.56 to 10 power 150 kg per meter cube 
it is an infinite density it will be so dense and super hot so what will be the state of the matter our sun it is having an a uh, core temperature of 10 power 8 kelvin as solar plasma normal plasma or you if the temperature is right by uh, 100 times you have hadron plasma like what you find in neutron star and if the temperature is still rise by 10 uh, 100 times you have quark gluon plasma inside the black hole what is the temperature to be so so heavy so so big so you cannot really imagine what is being inside the black hole nobody knows but we can hear it but nobody really knows so galaxy m87 picture you are now able to see in this screen we have a supermassive black hole in galaxy m87 the black hole is having an effective range of influence like 40 billion kilometers so that is a fossil radius or up to that radius the effect of the black hole is completely seen the black hole is 500 million trillion kilometers away and recently the even horizon telescope was able to capture the image and this is the image of that black hole the black hole was 6.5 billion times more massive than that of sun what will be the density then it will be greater than 10 to the power 16 and it is one of the heaviest black holes scientists have ever found it is an absolute monster so what is really inside a black hole nobody knows it is really really very really tough to understand we are not even able to find the internal structure of the electron which is having a size of 10 to the power minus 18 meter when the black hole is told to have a singularity less than the size of 10 to the power minus 40 meter only we can theorize we cannot really find it out and black holes are known to emit jets of matter into space super luminal jets jets which are traveling near the speed of light and that is coming from center of most of the galaxies and you can see in this picture black hole jets as it is coming from the center of many galaxies and you can see these are all not just optical images only these are all extra images optical images radio images everything put together then only you can really study about black hole jets so what is the history of Milky Way galaxy. Now we are moving from black holes to galaxies. Many questions were asked about galaxies. How galaxies are getting formed? I have already told you how solar systems were getting formed from a cloud of gas and dust. Galaxies are also thought to form from a massive cloud of gas and dust. They begin to rotate. The center part begins to rotate more and more. So. the first generation star form near the center of the galaxy and they are metal poor star and they are the first generation star and stars and clusters are left behind in the halo and the gas cloud flattens new generations of stars and we have flatter distribution they will be formed around the spiral uh, arms of galaxies and then we have finally the galaxy getting formed the disk of the galaxy is now very thin there will be a central bulge near the center of the galaxy and you will be able to see these kind of images in the images of many galaxies many spiral galaxies so this is milky way galaxy we do not taken the image of milky way galaxy this is an artistic rendition we really do not have a real picture of milky way galaxy but based on observation this is the best knowledge of milky way galaxy what we are having now and this is the place position of sun as we have already seen and this is the nuclear bulge in the center of the milky way galaxy so that is the disk and the nuclear bulge you are able to see and it is a broad center broad spiral galaxy the halo also you are able to see and you can see the places where you go globular cluster galaxies are much much diverse in their shapes and this is double deep field you are able to see a large variety of galaxies here spiral galaxies you are able to see elliptical galaxies you are able to see irregular galaxies there are so many different types of galaxies right so based on how elliptical they are the galaxies are uh, classified as e0 to e7 
E0 means they are perfectly spherical, E7 means they are highly elliptical, right? And then you have spiral galaxies, tightly bound spiral galaxies and loosely bound spiral galaxies. Then you have barred spiral galaxies. They will have tightly bound, loosely bound, barred spiral galaxies. Then you have irregular galaxies. You can see spiral galaxies are rich in gas and dust. They are having active star formation region as the current understanding of science. Then you have barred spiral galaxies. These are all different types of galaxies. Few questions were asked on rotation of galaxies. How can you say galaxies are rotating? We study the spectrum. If the spectrum is going towards the blue shift, then we can say that these galaxies are moving towards here. And if the shift is towards that side of the spectrum, but those galaxies are moving away from the Earth. And by studying the different points in these galaxies, we can say that they are rotating, right? It is based on the spectral study of the galaxy. So, we are having electromagnetic spectrum. We know the constituents of electromagnetic spectrum, starting from radio waves, microwaves, and then infrared, visible ultraviolet, X-ray and gamma ray, we have so much of things in electromagnetic spectrum. You can see clearly here, radio waves are reaching the surface of the planet without much difficulty. Visual window is also clearly reaching down to the surface, but you are not able to see either infrared or ultraviolet or X-rays, even some of the gamma rays are not reaching down up to the planet Earth's surface. And that is why, for some of the astronomical observations, we are going to space, right? We, as physics students, know about wavelength frequency because of the difficulty in observing some part of the electromagnetic spectrum from the surface of the planet Earth, we need satellites to observe. Now we have moved to telescopes, right? We need high-flying airplanes or satellites to observe infrared spectrum. We have optical telescopes. Optical telescopes are part of human beings some 400 years before when Hans Lippershe and Galileo, they invented telescopes independently, right? And the larger the telescope, the more light it gathers. Now we have so many telescopes coming online. Many students have asked, how can I start a research career in astronomy? I will be answering that question at the end of the lecture, but you have to be aware of all the international projects which are coming online, not only in optical telescope, in optical telescope, so three big international projects are coming online. European Extremely Large Telescope, Large Magellan Telescope, and the Tachymeter Telescope. Tachymeter Telescope, TMT, Large Magellan Telescope, LM Large Magellan Telescope, and then Extremely large telescope, European extremely large telescope. So, the bigger the telescope, the more light we gather, right? We are keeping telescopes on mountain tops so as to avoid atmospheric turbulence and light pollution because of the civilization. There are many, many modern designs of telescopes. We have kept one telescope mirror as you are seeing here. And the optics is very, very complex. It is not simply having a mirror, collecting some light, doing some analysis, right? You are having really wonderful design, like the very large telescope, 8.1 meter mirror of the Gemini telescope you are able to see. As I have told you, we have radio telescopes. Now we have a process called interferometry, and by interferometry, we are able to create a larger telescope uh, radius as it is really existing. If you want to collect a large amount of radio waves, the telescope should be bigger and bigger. But we use the principle of interferometry to connect with all these things and we are able to successfully uh, have an effect as if the telescope is so very large. But you can see the telescopes are finite in size, like the very large array telescope, very large baseline array telescope in the USA. You 
you have infrared telescopes, you have so many telescopes which were launched into space like IRA, Infrared Astronomy Satellite, Chandra, which takes uh, the sky in X-ray wavelength. Then you go UUV, you have ultraviolet image of the celestial objects. Then NASA is having split surface telescope. Then you are having ultraviolet radiation telescope. It has to be done from satellites, X-ray astronomy. These kind of different, different tools of astronomy are studying different phenomena. And they are pulling all of them together and they are trying to understand the giant scale structure of the universe. How all these things came into being, how all these things are going to be in the near future. Right? And this is Chandra's X-ray, NASA's Chandra X-ray observation. Then you have gamma ray astronomy. India is, India is also a pioneer in gamma ray astronomy. And they have space-based gamma ray observatory. They have also ground-based gamma ray observatory. Many, many interesting projects are coming online in the near future. So telescopes are really wonderful phenomena. There are some questions like, is time travel possible? Is time travel really possible? In science fiction, it is possible. Recently, there was a movie called Avengers Infinity War and Endgame. Do you remember those movies? So in that movie, the heroes were traveling in time either backwards or forward. Time travel, is it possible? Theoretically, it is possible. But when we are really coming into an experimental scenario, it has not been proven so far. They say that there are some space-based applications like GPS which will vouch for time travel. But time travel is an entirely different concept. As of now, theoretically it is possible, but in reality, it may not be possible. There are a few interesting questions like how they are going to some other star system, how we can go to other galaxies. Now, we have so much of imagination on these kind of things. NASA has at least theoretically warp drive technology. They have so many designs for spacecraft. So by rotation, these spacecraft create artificial gravity inside their place. So you may know in space there will be no gravity, acceleration due to gravity. And these kind of spacecraft, they may be rotating around a common center and they may be creating artificial gravity. So is it possible, warp drive, is it possible? Do we have some connecting links to other part of the universe? Are black holes connecting links to other universes? All these things are in theoretical level only. Nobody has proven it and we are trying to do our level best trying to prove them. But as of now, it is not that. Now we have come to the end of our lecture, the Big Bang Theory. How it all began? So many questions were asked about Big Bang Theory. So Big Bang, as per the current understanding of science, happened some 13.7 billion years before. And you can see for so much of time, radiation was dominating. Maybe up to 10 power 4 years, the radiation was dominating. Then the first stars began to form. You can see initially hydrogen was formed, helium was formed to a very, very, very less extent. Heavy metals like lithium, carbon, oxygen, they were formed. And as the time increased, the temperature came down to the current temperature of more than, slightly more than 2 Kelvin, you can see the temperature is, the universe is expanding as time passes and it is cooling down as the time passes and after a particular point of time, stars were able to form. So what is Big Bang? And 13.7 billion years ago, there was nothing, absolutely nothing, no, nothing. 
there was not anything right so suddenly there was a big bang and everything began to expand because of the force of the big bang as time increased universe cooled down and stars were able to form galaxies were able to form and now we are at the end of this track 13.7 billion years away from the time when big bang happened as per the current understanding of time now matter is dominating right so there are three types of the universe as we are aware of if the, there is something called as critical density right so let me tell what uh, about critical density critical density is the density of the known universe if the critical density is equal to the critical density is a density uh, if the current density is equal to critical density then the universe will be a flat universe if the current density of the universe is greater than the critical density the universe will collapse back and if the current density is less than the critical density the universe will expand forever so that is the current understanding of time right so critical density is a constant or it's a value in physics if we are above it or below it or equal to it we will have three phases of the universe okay then what is dark matter so many questions were asked about dark matter also the galaxies in our universe seem to be achieving an impossible speed what is that impossible speed they are rotating with so great a speed okay so the gravity generated by them is not able to sustain a stable galaxy are we having stable galaxy yes we do have stable galaxy otherwise we are in for trouble stars will come and collide with us forget about meteor asteroid or meteorite comets forget about all the small things stars will come and collide with our solar system so universe galaxy is somewhat stable but do we have enough matter inside each galaxy to hold them together as per the current understanding of science we do not have enough matter to hold them together the same is true for galaxies in cluster we do not have enough matter visible matter to hold them together by gravity so scientists are thinking there are some matter which we cannot see which is at work so that is called as dark matter they think that we cannot detect this dark matter directly because they are weakly interacting with the electromagnetic spectrum they are weakly interacting with the visible matter around them but they are having gravity because of their enormous gravitational effect galaxies are stable groups of galaxies are stable super cluster of galaxies are stable this strange and unknown matter is known as dark matter now we are coming to some realm of fiction they are not able to explain the dense scale structure of the universe that is why we are putting forward a theory called unseen cannot be detected cannot be interacted with matter called dark matter so dark matter is seen in this picture so you are seeing a galactic cluster that blue color thing is galaxies which are behind this galactic cluster as per einstein's general theory of relativity there will be a gravitational bending of light and you are seeing the gravitational bending of light of galaxy which is behind this star cluster and it can be only possible if this galaxy cluster is having dark matter okay can dark matter be composed of normal matter no as of now no the normal matter is made up of protons neutrons electrons as we know it we do not have even antimatter we have very very less amount of antimatter right the density of baryons is not enough to recall the dense scale structure of the universe that is why we are going for dark matter the density of all the baryonic matter is less than 4% only right so uh, let me go slightly faster 
we have some theories put forward for dark matter like macos massive compact halo objects right so that is all some kind of dark matter then you have wimps weakly interactive massive objects wimps right weakly interacting massive particle so that is some theory put forward to explain the dark matter what is the matter content of the universe the known visible thing forms only 4.6 there is something called as dark matter there is something called as dark energy so these estimates may vary slightly now and then but you can be assured of one thing the known visible matter is less than 4 percentage but what about dark matter it forms 23 percent of the universe dark energy is something which forms 73 73 percent of the universe so you can see the stars will form 0.5 percentage neutrinos will form 0.3 percentage and other heavy element will be forming less than 0.03 percentage so what is this dark energy it is a theoretical form of energy which has been shown in opposition to the gravitational force and as you know some 25 years before scientists discovered some astounding thing the expansion of the universe is not slowing down but it is rather accelerating for explaining the acceleration of the expansion of the universe scientists took taken into account something called as dark energy it accounts for most of the energy in the universe and it is causing the expansion of the universe to accelerate so now what will happen if this scenario continues if the universe is expanding far ever there was an interesting question can we control the universe can we control the earthquake earthquake you can control to a lesser amount by designing the building you cannot really control the earthquake but you can control the damage caused by earthquake okay. so can we control the universe can we control the planet first can we control the solar system first can we control a group of stars first can we control a galaxy if we can answer this question then we can say we can control the universe when we are taking children for a study to we may not be even be able to control children but if we are successful in controlling children if we are taking college students on a trip i do not want to go further it may be difficult for some faculty to control them but anyhow what will happen if the universe is expanding forever and ever we will go into a journey into darkness there is a mysterious force known as dark energy that rules the universe it is a constant anti gravitational force so what will happen the universe will expand faster and faster matter will continue to dilate in 10 power 100 years all the things will be disintegrated all sun all stars our planetary system everything will disintegrate everything will die and this is going to happen as per some understanding of scientists in the distant future but what is big rip theory then it is called as a sudden death as the days go by the dark energy gains strength and it will accelerate the expansion of the universe even faster and faster and true trillion years from now the universe will be violently ripped up all the things will rip up and will die a slow death there are many alternative theories to the formation the existence of universe big bang theory is not the only theory like steady state theory quasi steady state theory cyclic universe theory big bang theory how the universe is going to end the big bang theory if the critic density of the universe is greater than the critical density it will end in a big crunch mode there are some theories on the big freeze big flash big break if you put put big before something it will become a theory now we are coming to the last question which i am planning to answer what was there before the big bang this was the question asked by quite a number of people what was there before big bang now the great scientist stephen hawking has answered it like this i think the universe was spontaneously generated out of nothing according to the laws of science it 
it has no beginning and no end. This is from Stephen Hawking. We have another astronomer, Lawrence M. Cross. He was persistently asked this question, what was there before the Big Bang? For which he answered, there are some questions for which we can find answers. For some questions which we may not be able to find answers, we should be able to know the difference and we should step away from questions which we cannot answer right now. So, that was an answer given by a scientist. So, what was that before the Big Bang? For some questions we may not be able to answer right now, we should be stepping away from those kind of questions. What was that before the Big Bang? We don't know. That was the answer, right? So, evolutionary cosmologists, they have always criticized creation issue as unscientific because of its basic commitment to the doctrine of creation out of nothing. Yet, evolutionary cosmologists, they are also maintaining the same position. The universe evolved itself out of nothing. So, I leave it to you to decide for yourself. Creation is to at least postulate an adequate cause to produce the universe. There is an infinite, omnipotent, omniscient, omni, uh, omni, omniscient, transcendent, self-existing God, personal creator God who might have created the universe, or we came from nothing. Either we came from nothing and are behind all of our existence, there may be a loving and personal God, the God of creation. So with this, I have come to the end of my lecture. I hope you had a very interesting journey. Now it is time for question and answer. answer. So never stop learning. That is what I am coming to say. So never stop learning. So we will now take a couple of questions from the audience. So over to you, Dinakar. Dinakar, you can now ask. 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 Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? 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 Can you hear me?